Jay, how does an assessment company actually go about assessing people, employees, on the uh, competencies that are created for them? What are some of the metrics that you're using? So basically, you want to know whether we drink our own Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, there, there's a, a reality about assessment that I don't think is, is uh, well known. And certainly, I was not an educational measurement professional when I came to ETS. I was a consultant. Uh, I worked for American Airlines. I, I worked for a num number of consulting companies. And the reality is that the more valid you want the assessment to be, the more complex you want the claim to be there, the more money you will pay. So it, it is not feasible to say, well, let's do these assessments on all these folks here. So our approach to it is start with value, then have the conversations about what are the performances that you can say that absolutely lead to value there in terms of that, walk backwards through that uh, in, in a more subjective manner there. We do use uh, assessments for for fit for our own, our own employees, but that's, that's a different matter in terms of uh, first selection and, and then uh, in some, some cases for promotion. But our assessment of this is necessarily and explicitly subjective. And so one of the things that we emphasize is that the conversations around development should be conversations that produce learning. Both sides should look at the uh, the situation in a different way when they when they come out of it. They should have learned something. And so we're saying if you're going to go into those conversations, you better be curious, you better be transparent uh, in that way. What we have done is we've included multiple points. We're not big fans of anonymous 360s there. So these are known folks. And we, we encourage an employee, choose somebody upstream, choose somebody downstream, as well as your manager there, so that you have these data points there where someone can say, here's where I would put them. Are they learning? Are they proficient? Are they masterful? Are they expert? And here's my evidence for that to start the conversation. So one of the things that I first learned at, at ETS from some of the uh, great education management professionals there is that not every situation deserves or merits an assessment. And so we don't think it's a matter of crafting an assessment for whether people have these competencies, we think it's too dynamic. Uh, we, we think there's, it's too complex. We think it merits ongoing conversations about these competencies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. So Rosanna, what is your approach to uh, assessment um, and metrics, and especially some of these uh, soft skills? I'm assuming it's harder to measure soft skills and some of the things you mentioned, like fearlessness as a competency. So can you talk a little bit about that? Well, I think that I think DirecTV's IT organization has done a good job of embracing the idea of looking differently. To be sure, DirecTV has a very robust and well thought out leadership model. They use a number of traditional assessments. They use a 360. They do all of that good hygiene. What <laughs> IT has done, because the goal was to deliver high performance and innovation and become the best IT organization in the industry through building game, changer, game changers and transformational learning, quite a mouthful. They had to look at it differently. And, and as someone over 35, yes, it's true, <laughs> socially, their internal social media has taken a big role in this. To be sure, as an IT organization, they're always looking at themselves to see their productivity scores, their error rates, their health scores, but those things weren't enough. So to look at fearlessness, vulnerability, and innovation, they look at it a little bit differently using their internal social media site. For example, they posted uh, an internal EMBA, and that's in quotes because it is not an EMBA at all. It is really a journey in building game changers where the IT team, the CIO and his direct reports, teach cases on IT business leadership to 52 of their high potentials. What's interesting about this is these high potentials have gotten their role in that on the EMBA by saying why they're the best living the learning leader, by publicly self-assessing themselves against the 12 steps and the cultural manifesto. They have then publicly given feedback to each other. That has been opened up to the entire 900 people in IT who are giving feedback to those folks 
along with the leadership team. And by the way, Mike White and Joe Bosch, the CEO and head of HR then, did the same thing, gave them feedback. So you have this public conversation going on. And those same folks then created a living the learning game where they could teach the rest of the organization. When you start that kind of public conversation about these radical behaviors, these radical competencies, interesting things happen. This same organization has used that sort of crowdsourcing uh, in a tool called Portal of Pain, where for 48, hour, 48 hours we will open a venue for the employee base to tell us how are we being the most fearless in terms of innovation. And then we crowdsource those things. Um, and you can see who is prioritizing what and how many folks. This sort of public conversation in real time allows us to pivot and to keep our eye on that North Star of value creation. But it's very different. There you have it. Thanks, mm -hmm. Rosanna. Okay, Robert, what do you think of TJ and Rosanna's approach to metrics, and how do you do it at Ketchum? Right. Yeah, yeah it makes sense to me. I, I think uh, I'd be interested to hear our audience speak when that time comes. It's interesting to me how relevant our conversation about competencies is to the, to the specific industries that we're in, you know? It makes sense to me. I, I think there's some common themes across the three of us, but also we're quite different. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, at Ketchum, I can't. I don't have uh, error rates. I, I don't have error rates that I can measure our people on. Uh, I don't have uh, test validity or test fulfillment rates I can measure our people on. Public relations is almost entirely a uh, field of delivery of services to clients <laughs> in which you can't really measure specifically exactly uh, through some third party uh, area. Now, what do we do? Well, I would say how we do it, uh, it's business results, period. There's no other way for us to be able to measure the competency or effectiveness of our people other than in, number one, is the client satisfied? Is the client satisfied with you? Is the client asking you to stay on the team? Is the cl uh, a client giving us more work as a result of how great you are at providing public relations services to them. So the second assessment is client growth, uh, your billable hours, are you billing, uh, you know, and growing because clients want more of your work. Uh, those are the two primary uh, measures of our people's competency. A third one is uh, external industry awards because there's a, in PR there's a lot of these uh, industry s settings in which everybody tries to show their best work and then the best work is given an award uh, like the Cannes Festival for example we show oh look at this great uh, work we did for P&G if they say against all the other people's yeah you, you, you really did the best public relations campaign then we win an award that's also uh, an assessment it's somewhat objective because it's outside of uh, our own thinking. And then after that, it becomes the subjective assessments, right? And I would say the primary one for us right now is what we call fluid teams because our clients uh, are wanting such a broad variety of new services that none of our people can be generalists anymore. You, you have to uh, assemble a group of specialists to deliver the knowledge services our clients want. So every one of our people is moving from team to team to team constantly. And short teams form for a project for a client and then disband it. And so we're trying to find the extent to which the individual is effective as a team member through this fluid team process. I'd say that's the major qualitative thing we're doing. One, one other thing I wanted to say is uh, when I joined Ketchum in 2002, we had a full set of competencies, a, a full set of 360s. Uh, we had three arenas. Uh, people were measured on how good are you with people, kind of the leadership stuff, how good are you with clients, and how good are you in knowledge of our business uh, results. They, there were like eight uh, categories in each of those. There were like six items per category. I mean, and everybody was fulfilling this 360. 
And honestly, it just went away because it ended up being irrelevant. It, it wasn't measuring competencies, it was measuring something else. And so we are in a process now where we don't have a 360 on our people. So we're still trying to figure this out. How are we going to do our measure of assessment of our people and compare them to each other? But that, that went away in our field, in public relations, knowledge services, fast-moving field.